Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. We're going to continue our series of regional fishing previews this week, but first we just want to remind viewers that North Dakota Outdoors is open and we encourage you to get outside and fish or take a hike in our wide open spaces. And when you do, please practice the recommendations for minimizing the spread of the COVID-19 virus. Avoid areas that are already crowded and keep a minimum of six feet between you and others. Fishing season is open year round in North Dakota. And if you're headed out in the near future, you'll need a new fishing license starting April 1st. If you're looking for a good place to fish, here's this week's previews. Continuing our fishing reports this week is Lake Sakakawea Fisheries District Manager, Dave Frieda. Dave, let's talk about walleyes in Lake Sakakawea, the abundance and the size structure. It's kind of a broken record the last few years, but we still have record abundance and a very good size structure in our walleyes throughout the reservoir. Uh, it, it's continuing on. We've had good water and good forage and things are consistently, we're about four years of this high level with good size structure of walleyes throughout the reservoir. And it shows anglers caught a lot of fish last year. Yeah, last year was good, really good, but maybe a little slower than the year before with real high water, but uh, overall fishing's been excellent. Okay, and you mentioned forage. How is the sm smelt population? Uh, smelt population's good yet. Overall forage is good. Okay, let's talk northern pike in Lake Sakakawea. Uh, pike abundance trended down somewhat from the highs that we had. Um, there is a lot of nice pike, uh, top end pike in the reservoir. Uh, there is quite a few young year classes actually coming up now too. So no, there's, the pike population's in good shape. Okay, uh, uh, fish species in Lake Sakakawea that's underutilized is the smallmouth bass and catfish. Yep, and the fishery for both is, yeah, very good. Uh, Smallmouth, there is a few people target them, uh, but there's definitely a, and there's a trophy component to that too, but there is a good fishery for catfish. More so even in the middle to upper portions of the reservoir are better for catfish, but. Okay, let's move on to salmon. Salmon last summer were pretty tough. Um, overall, we had high flows throughout the dam and, and they operated the emergency spillway again last summer for the second year in a row and the third time since 2011. And this is the first year that we had those gates open well into the fall spawning season. And we were kind of worried about that because the fish tend to stack up in the corners of the dam as they come shallow in August, you know, end of August into early September when they first come up. And, and in fact, that did prove to be the case. We had, there was very few fish in the spawning run, adults left in the reservoir. Uh, we had a hard time collecting any. There was a lot of fish in the in the res or in the tail race and in the river throughout the summer and especially into the fall. The majority of our eggs, 90 some percent of our eggs, were taken from the river last year. And those fish were fish that originally originated, were stocked in Lake Sakakawea. We have uh, coated wire tag, a lot of fish each year, and those tags confirm which we know those fish are coming through the dam. So there was a high level of entrainment of salmon and other species too, walleye and even northern pike also. Okay, uh, speaking of the tail race, you also manage the tail race area. How are things looking down there? Uh, again, overall, right in the immediate tail race, fishing has been pretty good. Um, there is some bigger fish too, but again, the garrison reach farther down is, has been still compromised in 2011 with the habitat changes we've seen. But last summer, the fishing was pretty good. And again, a lot of that is being supplemented, these larger fish from stuff that is moving through garrison dam. A lot of those fish are originating in Skakawea, the walleyes especially. Our, our tagging that we've done on Skakawea last summer on walleyes, 4% of our tag returns from last summer come from the garrison tail race, fish that have moved through the dam and been caught by anglers. And we've had northern pike, and there's been a good, a good fishery for northern pike the last couple of years in the, in the tail race, the pilot channel, and, and those areas that had a good fishery for northern pike. But those fish, again, are, are largely originating from Lake Sakakawea with the operation of that emergency spillway. So those fish were not, their origin initially was not garrison reach fish, the majority of them. Last year, Dave, you guys tagged 2,000 walleye, 3,000 walleye in Lake Sakakawea? We did about 3,275 walleye throughout the reservoir from White Earth Bay down to the east end of the reservoir during the spring spawning season. Okay, and, and um, why? We haven't done a tagging study for 
oh, over 10 years since the last fish we tagged. And periodically we do a tagging study just to monitor uh, exploitation of the population. And, and right now, the last time we did a tagging study was during, largely during the drought of the early 2000s. And it was d definitely a different fishery at the time. They were, they were, the size structure was down, overall abundance was down, body condition was obviously down. Um, now we, we have probably, well, we do have the highest abundance of walleyes in the reservoir since Garrison Dam went in the last several years. And we have a good size structure, so we, we got an opportunity to take a look at a, a population that's in ex excellent shape, the fishing is good, and the primary things we're looking for is angler exploitation, how are anglers using these fish, what percentage are they catching, what percentage are they keeping, where are these fish moving, what, what kind of movements do they have from fish tagged in various portions of the reservoir, and also somewhat growth rates we can monitor in a little bit, but primarily how anglers are using them, how they're surviving also, and, and where they're moving. Okay, and you've done the same thing with northern pike for the last couple of years. Yeah, our northern pike's a little bit different. The walleye is, is targeted at taking a look at the entire population, the entire adult population of walleyes from, you know, essentially 14, 15 inches up to whatever the biggest ones we catch. So that looks at the entire population. The, the pike tagging study is focused on a trophy component of the pike fishery. Roughly pike over 40 inch cutoff, one meter long, are, we've been tagging those the last three years just to get a look at how anglers are utilizing this trophy component, how they're harvesting these fish, are they overexploited? There was some concern with our good pike fishery from a few anglers that are avid pike anglers that are concerned that we're over harvesting these big pike. Um, the last three years our exploitation has been extremely low in those trophy pike. Uh, four, five, and seven percent I think the last three years. So extremely low exploitation on those trophy pike at this point in the study. A lot of great information Dave, thank you. Switching gears to the southwest part of the state, joining me now is Southwest District Supervisor Jeff Hendrickson. Jeff, last year was probably one of the wettest falls on record. How are lake levels doing in your district? Yeah, we had a lot of water last fall and, and all the lakes are basically full. All, all the reservoirs in the southwest are, are basically at full, full pool. And you were losing water last year at this time? Yeah, last year at this time we were kind of dry. We had some winter kills, things like that. This winter, not going to have any winter kills, I don't think. Okay, let's move into your fish species, Jeff. Let's talk about walleyes first. Okay, walleyes are pretty good populations in Patterson Lake, uh, Hard Butte, um, North Lemon. Got a couple new walleye lakes coming on that we just recently been stocking walleyes in Raleigh uh, and uh, Audland Dam has some and Spring Lake in Bowman County. Okay, how about Northern Pike in your district? Northern Pike, the usual spots, uh, Patterson Lake has good population, uh, Hard Butte, uh, a sleeper small lake would be Kalina, Kalina Dam down by Bowman. That has a pretty good northern population. Okay, let's move into panfish. Uh, let's talk about bluegills in your district. Now, bluegills, uh, you got pretty good populations of bluegills in, uh, in um, it would be like Sheep Creek. That's all, the old standby. That always has a lot of bluegills. Uh, Lemon Lake, North Lemon Lake has pretty good bluegills right now. Uh, Patterson Lake has not a lot of abundance of bluegill, but nice quality sized bluegills in Patterson Lake. Okay, and bass? Bass, uh, largemouth bass, uh, North Lemon Lake has really nice uh, population of quality sized bass. Uh, Sheep Creek um, and then and Davis Dam and Camel's Hump all have really nice largemouth bass populations. Uh, smallmouth bass, you're looking at Hard Butte Reservoir and Bowman Haley, nice populations of quality fish. Okay, how about trout? Trout, uh, all of our lakes are pretty much put and take trouts. The Community Lakes, uh, uh, Camel's Hump, Sheep Creek, uh, they all have nice trout in them, Mott Watershed, they'll, they'll all get stock trout right away this spring. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about these community ponds around the state. Uh, early in the season is the time to hit them. Yeah, you got the trout just coming into them, and then uh, we're also putting catfish in a lot of the community fisheries, uh, large catfish up to 10 pounds, some of them. So they're a great place to take somebody who's never been yeah. fishing or somebody that 
just wants to get out for a day. Awesome, awesome, nice, big, I mean, big fish to catch. Okay, uh, any other projects going on in your district? Oh yeah, uh, this spring we're, we need to take some perch out of Bodlin Dam. It's got an overabundant small, small, a lot of small perch in there that we really need to remove. So we'll be removing some of them out of uh, out of Bodlin Dam. We really don't need to trap and transport too much because most of our lakes are full and they didn't wear kill. Um, and speaking of perch, uh, North Le or. Uh, Larson Lake in Hedinger County uh, just got perch last year after a winter kill and they're, they're looking pretty good. I'm expecting in about a year there'll be a good fishable population. And with these higher water levels that helps for perch habitat? Oh yeah, it helps reproduction of perch because of flooded vegetation and stuff like that. So. A lot of great information Jeff, thank you. You're welcome. Remember, starting April 1st, you need a new fishing license. And to find out all the rules and regulations, pick up a North Dakota 2020 to 2022 fishing guide. You can also view those regulations on the Game and Fish Department's website at gf.nd.gov. For Jeff Hendricks and Dave Frieda and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.